Yo, you already know what it is, man. Another episode, man. Who am I t with T. Murray? Man, we got some special guests in the building, bro. I ain't think I, I wanted to get the interview. I ain't think I was going to get it this early, but my boy came through for me. Hit that DM. He was like, shit, let's do it. So we here, man. You know, the name of the platform is Who Am I with T. Murray. So we're going to start off like we start off every show, and we're going to let y'all let the folks know who y'all are. I'm um, King Lou from Washington, D.C. Um, I'm an artist. I make music. <clears throat> I am shout out to him. from Orlando, Florida. SD, the gang. All that creep, y'all. Y'all know me, man. Mr. Controversial, man. Roll up the bread. Fuck the internet up every time. Got both of my dogs here. You know what I'm saying? Both of my artists. Got T. Murph in the back. My own team. Team Dread. We're in the bed. SD. Y'all know what time it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So... We gonna get right into it, man. Y'all boys just sit back, relax, man. We vibing. So we gonna start off with you, King Lou. Mm. How you how you got the name King Lou? I mean, um, I'm African. My 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 mother always told me I was a king, born born and raised. Um, and then my real name is Olu, so we just cut the O off and put a put a U on it. So that's L U U two U's. That's sure. Right. My first name was um Gucci Peruvian. <laughs> and they came up with some, that was that was my team that came up with that. I was rocking with it for a little bit, then we just switched to the King Lou because I wanted to get back to my natural roots. And that's hard, bro. I like that. I like that. So how long you been doing music? About two years now. Okay. Like seriously two years. <coughs> seriously two, two years. years. So what got you like what got you started in the music like you been into um, it? So, I we was in I was in college when we were like playing around in the dorm room, like playing with beats, uh, me and Ray Lewis. Um and then he was like, You got a voice, you might as well try to, you know, go go to the studio. Next time I go, you wanna come with me? And then I went for him and his brother and it was just I like I like the energy that was in there, you know. And it's kinda um it's stress relieving. It helped me like be able to talk and get rid of my pain. Sometimes I don't. I feel like I don't need a psychiatrist because I let it go on the mic. That's real. Yeah. That's real. Young Shard. That's probably. Man, tell me a little bit about Young Shard. You feel me? Not the artist, but just the person. Shit. <clears throat> For real growing up, feel me. A lot of my focus was on sports. Feel me? Like it was always. A lot of shit going on, you feel me around, you feel me? But I was always kind of focused on the league. Yeah. Me? Just like a lot of motherfuckers. But football was it for me. You feel me? I was, I had an older brother who was kind of already paving the way. You feel me? And I was, everything else ain't matter. Yeah. No matter who I was around, ain't what I was on type shit. You feel me? Went to school, <clears throat> went to a couple different colleges trying to make it work. Long story short, ended up getting hurt. Feel me, ended up back here, and I'm. Um, feel me, music was always something that I played around with. Yeah. You feel me, but it was never like sports was the main. Yeah. Part, feel me, but once I got like, I would say like freshman, sophomore in college, it started becoming like how I cope with shit. You feel me? Because I really didn't. <clears throat> I never really been like a big talker. I was always normally a quiet nigga, but. Sports became, I mean, music became a way where I would, like, express myself. You feel me? And, like, my older cousin, who really, like, my brother, but technically my uh, first cousin, feel me? He was in and out of jail and getting locked up and shit. So, <clears throat> like, the first song I ever put out was a song about him. You feel me? I put out a free e out song. Okay. That bitch ended up kind of, I put it on SoundCloud. That bitch hit, like, 10,000, like, in, within a couple weeks. And at that time, I was in Utah. You feel me? So I wasn't even, like, around, and, like, in the yeah. city type shit. And that bitch took off. Hard. And outside of that taking off, it was just like, I love music. Feel me? So yeah. I really started off like in the garage. Like, I'm mean, <clears throat> in the parking garage in my car uh, on an iPad, garage band, record song. That's how I made my first song. And that bitch still up today. And I was doing that for a while. Bumped into him. Feel me? He from, he from Miami. I'm from, I'm from the Oak. But we both went to Utah State. Okay. He graduated. 
a couple years before me. But when I when I was out there, he was still out there. Yeah. He heard that I was rapping a little bit. I showed him some shit off my garage band, like, like this shit fire something. He like, bro, you got something, but you gotta get in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> he kinda and it kinda just ran from that, which is kinda how you feel me. It came down to this because he was one of the first motherfuckers that was like, feel me, you can do it, but yeah. you gotta at least start getting your shit. You at least gotta get some type of quality behind you. But feel me, that's a little bit of the backstory about how I got into the music shit, but I've been rapping or whatever for since I was a jit. So. That's real. Before we get to you though, Shot, I'm gonna I'm put the folks up on how I got to y'all. So. You know, I'm, I'm so, the backstage, man. I'm backstage, so, man. So shout out. To my woe, I for chat me, you feel me? He invite me out to the like, event he had me. I come out to the <laughs> event, you know, boom. We had just talked about some shit, like what, a couple of days before, we could go some yeah. shit like that, Thanks. boom. I see, bruh, we chop it up. So he telling me immediately, like, yeah, boy, I got me artists I'm working with, you feel me? They, they for the perform tonight, you feel me? Like, I said, okay, bet. Bruh, this man came on stage when I say this man. King motherfucking Lou. You. Gone. <laughs> Danny, y'all energy, y'all, everybody was rocking with it. Y'all knew that bit word for word, bruh. Word for word. Had the whole shit swaying. I'm like, yeah. The radar went on like, yeah. Like, <laughs> keep my eye on them boys. Yeah, they got something. So you feel me? Like, and that's the thing about my platform. Like, I really be, you know, I'm going to have certain interviews where, you know, people with names, but that's later on down the line. Really, right. my platform, I'm coming up in, I'm coming up through the mud. Like, I'm trying to find the ones that's for the pop right now who need a void. Like, you feel me? Fact. Who need to tell their story, who need to, who just need a platform to just pop their shit. You feel me? Like, them the folks I want to. Lock in with and link with and, and grow with too, cause I'm out the mud with my shit myself. You feel me? So short. So, bro, already telling me, you know, he shows you some of his own um, music. You like, okay, y'all boys got what? What is it you seen overall in them that just made you want to take your time out? You feel me? And take your knowledge that you got with the shit, being that you, you feel me, you already running with. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Entity already, you feel me, if folks don't know, shout out Team Dread. Oh, yeah. So yeah. what made you, cause a lot of people won't do that, bro. Once you in a certain, you feel me, you in a certain place, like, niggas ain't really trying to look back or reach back and pick up some new talent. So what was it overall that, besides the friendship, you feel me? Cause obviously it was a friendship, though. Mm. I think Shaw, when I hear Shaw music, I I can relate to certain things. Like, I wouldn't deal with an artist that I don't kind of know and I kind of like feel his music. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? I, I got to like, like it, it, it got to grow on me. Yeah. So I think with Shaw, it was more like I heard the potential. So I just heard like, yo, like I'm straight to the point. Yeah. Like, like that tell you. So I'm like, hey, you gotta get your ass in the studio. Like, yeah, that's real. And he did, and like, the first song me and him made was like a singing song. But I always noticed that, you know, he got major, major talent. Like, dude yeah. can go, dude could rap about like, this interview, and put your name in it. Yeah. And put everybody who commented on Instagram live in it. Like, that's a special talent. Yeah, like, a lot that. of people don't understand that, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> and I'll be real, I don't even think he understand that, as far as like, how deep, that is in the music world, like, you yeah. know what I mean? And I think with Lou, it was more like his energy. Like, Lou just like, when he Lou, he go to the party and he, 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 he like light that bitch up on his song. It could be Shaw's song. But I think maybe by him is like, he go hard. Like he, like he, like he tries. Yeah. And I know yeah. since he been in Utah, the Don Tolliver's, the, the, uh, shoot, the Cheddar the Checkers, like these yeah. guys, um, what's the little dude name? I, I always say the little singer, man. Lori, the one with Juice World. <coughs> I can't even pronounce his name. His name. But Killer, Killer Ray. Yeah, like Killer Ray. So when I hear Lou, I think of that market. You know what okay. I'm saying? I think of not just Florida, Georgia, the yeah. South. I think of like Utah, Connecticut, California, yeah. another market. So for the brand, Rose, the brand, we we trying to put 
get d different artists in different markets, but also merge the markets. So, sure. cause I know Shaw gonna fuck up the South. He gonna, he, he gonna, he gonna kill the South. I know Lou gonna take over that, that outer world that we need. The people that actually go and purchase the music, not download this shit and, and yeah, don't purchase yeah. it. And I'm saying over here, y'all, when these albums drop, purchase it, right? Because these, because these guys spend money in the studio. And see what I'm trying For to sure. say, like, so it's like a payback. But yeah, like when I think of those boys, that's what I think. And then I think when them two together, they like rich gang. Remember how rich gang was? So it's like <coughs> when they together, it was like powerful. You know what I'm saying? Like when rich gang came out, it was like, who are these two yeah. different ass yeah. niggas on the same yeah. beat? So that's what I think about like when I see them boys, like, and they do their separate shit, you know what I'm saying? They do they together, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? So they go hard, you know what I mean? That's real, that's real. So man, we're gonna keep this shit going, man. So we heard before we got here, man, we wanted to get a little bit into the female topic, you feel me? For the first we get the female topic back to this back to the song. Explain where you was at. Cause it's like when I heard the song from bruh, from when you the intro comes on. When you ain't, and you just, yeah, I can, you can already tell you that shit coming from somewhere deep, you feel me? So put me in, put me in the mind frame you was in when you made that song. And so for, um, honestly, for Ain't No Love Song, I was like in this space where I had kids on the way and um, I was trying to figure out what I needed to do. And I was going in the wrong direction. Um, so I feel like I needed to get my mind off the baby even being here because he wasn't here yet. I had to get my mind right and get some money. You know what I'm saying? Chase some paper real quick. So by the time they get here, they'll be set. And then um, I also was going through with the mother of my kids at the time. And she was just so mad I was making music. So I made that song just to be like, it, like I said, when I get in the booth, it literally relieves stress. So I didn't know how to tell her, like, oh, yeah, you make me feel this way. You make me feel uncomfortable. So I put it in the song. I, um, and I also was trying to stay away from the arguments <clears throat> with her at the time because she was pregnant. And then um, so when I made the verse, it was like basically talking about everything that I was thinking about what might happen, what, what already happened. And things like that. That's what that really that's where that song came from. Like just going through the motion of having a kid. He didn't even like the damn song. I didn't. I really just made it just because like I said, some songs I made Don't them always be the ones. <laughs> yeah, but I told his ass uh, Don't them always be the ones though, bro. Like I told him that's it. The one you be down there about to press delete and your your dog, you, hey boy, you tripping boy, that that's him. It be like that. Right. So, so with when I made that song, it was just I was just looking at it like I got it off my chest now. Yeah, so relieved. That's how that's how that song came about. So with that being said, you know what I'm saying. Just what, what's your overall take on just where females at right now in 2022? You feel me? How they stepping? How they coming? You feel me? Uh, my overall take on it, honestly, is just I think the social media thing got them all caught up in how life really is because. I'm not gonna say they don't respect themselves, but they do anything for attention now. So even with the mother of my kids, sometimes she put our situations on the internet and I'm like, you ain't supposed to do that, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I feel like that's with any females. You got your different ones out here. You got the ones that uh, be on Instagram half naked just to get more likes. You got the ones that vent to the, to the Instagram just to get attention from other people and feedback from other people. And then you got the ones that just like watching everybody else's page. So <laughs> females uh, in this generation is absolutely different, but you you definitely got your females that still stay solid and things like that. For sure, and, and I, I, that's what I was looking for, you feel me? Yeah. Which you kind of answered the question I was gonna ask, which, which was, do you think in these times, like you could really find some, like a real relationship where like, Mom and pops, like yeah. grandma, them and shit like that. You nah. feel me? Where well, you could, you feel me? You meet the girl. You feel me? Y'all, she good. Y'all good. <laughs> you good. 
There you go, work like that. Y'all, you feel me? Because the time frame, back in the day, it wasn't no phones. It wasn't nothing to, it wasn't nothing to even, like, showcase who that female really was back in the day. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to think about that. Like, you know? You got to like, really step out. Yeah, shit. like, so when you think about the OGs, they things was the club. That was their social mm -hmm. media, you know what I'm saying? They probably been loose. Just ain't never broadcasting, mm -hmm. not broadcasting. Mm -hmm. That's real. Shot. I know, yeah. Where are you at, bro? 24. 24. So Cold. You, you feel me? You, you, stay, you know what I'm saying? You know, YG still, you feel me? Where you at with the far females? You got a you know, relationship, single? Uh, <clears throat> I'm single. But. So what you do you, from your perspective, what is looking like out there in the world, you feel me? From my perspective, there's a lot of, a lot of shit that they was talking about going on. Like you can't really, like you can't really avoid it, you feel me? Because there's so many females out here willing to sell themselves short just to please their followers. You feel me? So it's like, it's almost like the blind leading the blind. Yeah, you got, you got young girls looking up to these icons who don't even know what the hell going on. You feel me? You feel me? So it's like, when you, now more than ever, is when if you find one, you better. You got to cuff, yeah, cuff. You better yeah. log up or shoot the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shit, that shit don't work. But you can yeah, shoot the club up, really uh, boy. Niggas is disrespectful, it get worse. boy. It get worse. Yeah, yeah. Think about it. How, how many marriages... Your uncle's done had about three. Let's keep it G. I don't know. I don't got an uncle that really did. Like, I got my granddaddy. Like, yeah, 20 years. Tight shit. And then got like three. I like, had three wives. Like, five kids. Like, so it's like, yeah. It's like, hey, that's how it was. You know what I said? We got it. We don't want him to think on who I'm out with T Murray. We just we just mobbing with with the niggas, you feel me? We just gang gang all the way. So we gotta we gotta put the female perspective out there too. Cause we had a couple of few I asked a couple of females, like, you feel me? I told them what we were gonna talk about, so they like they threw some shit in. So they still on the yeah, niggas ain't shit vibe, you feel me? Are we are we not shit, bro? <laughs> I mean to be honest, they, they bring it out of us. You know what I'm saying? Because it be it could be a female that you're really into. Like, for real. But then she'll turn around and do some goofy shit. Like, yeah, and then now we acting, well, get the fuck on. Why you calling me? Like, I'm with my homeboy. So when we start acting in that character, then we turn to ain't shit. But when we calling you, where you at? Why you ain't answering the phone? Who with, your bitches got niggas around and you all making excuses. All right, now I'm like, I got ass. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> It is what it is. Like, you show me your ass, I can show you mine too. That's real. Yeah. The main thing, the main thing I noticing, like, different from this generation from the old school, is that it's okay being independent, having your own money, all that type of shit like that. But when you're dealing with somebody that's <clears throat> past, like, the, when y'all really fucking with each other, I don't think females these days know how to cater to a man. That makes sense. Okay. They don't know when it's time to, to, to. I don't want to say bow down, cause that sound bad. But you know, when you in a relationship, it's mm, take the lead. Uh, lead yeah, like they don't know when to let the man take the lead. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that causes a lot of, a lot of problems. Yes, sir. <clears throat> but they, they saying like you know the reason why I like that, cause you know, niggas is flipping the script. You feel me? You know, they coming home with the bag and shit. Then they got the crib playing PlayStation and shit. He going, he, he pursuing his music career. <laughs> yeah, that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, cop, cop. Nah, I'm gonna tell you why it's fucked up. Because you just called it a career, right? So that's like you doing now. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't judge my career. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's fact. So it's like, if you mad at my career, now I don't play the game like that. like. So I can't really compare to that, you feel me? Yeah. But that shouldn't be no flaw. That's like when you on, they be on TikTok all day. So niggas be on the game, you feel me? Like, 
That's just how it is. No, I feel like you in your bag, however you in your bag, you in your bag. You feel me like making millions off the game. Slow motion always better than no motion. I feel like this shit fucked up cause everything like bitch wanna wake up a million now. Type shit. Yeah, and I just feel like they just want the microwave effect. You right. You know what I'm saying? Like just wanna put it in the microwave and happen like that instead of putting it in the stove and watching that motherfucker cook up. Tell me. Even though it's willing to sell they sell short just for it's the fastest thing just for the image instead of working for me. Like people don't understand, like, even though shit it is ways of it's more than a lot of ways not a pop. It's still a process. Niggas be trying to skip the whole process. Shout out to Soldier Boy, you feel me? He fucked the game up with the internet, bro. That's why this shit is like yeah. it. That's why he could pop. He really could say that because he really yeah. did do it. I watched him do the shit. But people don't read. They looking at all they looking at is oh he put the shit on the internet. A nigga recorded and woo woo and it. Nah, bro, that nigga recorded a thousand something songs before that one song hit. You got to put it in the work. Nigga want to go to the studio and record one and a half songs. <laughs> mm. Yeah. That's the word. Don't let them do that. <laughs> but we, bro, we living in a time where there's more rappers than ever. You can go to any city. It's a thousand at least. I don't even pay them no mind. And yeah, not to say that's my focus, but I'm going to say you got to realize how saturated music is. So if you're not doing some or at least the background, then... Right. If you sitting there praying for one's on the pot, then no power to you, nigga. And I'm glad you said that being a young artist, dog, because I had a young artist who I was invited, I was kind of giving some game a little bit. And, bro, I almost swung on me, bro. I didn't even feel a lot to you because what I told him, you said, he felt like I, I insulted him. That's because people don't know how to fake And let me shit. tell you what I told him. He was talking about another rapper. Like man, I'm better than that shit, boy. Woo, woo. I so you, me being me, and I'm an NR too. First, I said, oh, "What makes you better than bro?" Oh man, he anybody he been he old he does he that. So you rap, let me hear that shit. And he looks at me. You know what I told him? I said, "Bro, I could close my eyes right now, spin around a hundred times in a circle, bro. Fall on the ground, dizzy." get back up, and when I gain my shit back and open my eyes, I could find that. I could find you anywhere. Right. And I was just being real, bro. Because you know all I heard in the in this freestyle? I kill niggas. I got cars. I kill niggas again. <laughs> and we got jury. I mean, that's the game. It's fucked up, but that's where that's the game. The music is going to. Yeah, that's the game. And he ain't said no special way. He ain't sing it. He ain't harmonize that shit. No nothing. He just, yeah, he just, da, 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 same old shit. But I think it's your hustle, though. It ain't about how, what your music sound like. Because <coughs> you got different ears. Sometimes it matters. I know that. Sometimes. But it's, it, it's some artists out here. That you could listen to it. For the shit that I be feeling like niggas be asking for a one, like, no, nah, you gotta do a little more than that. Yeah, I just think it's like, who you know, what you trying to do too. And the niggas don't realize that some niggas just got that lane, bro. Like, you can't, that's why you can't pocket watch nobody, bro. You just gotta mm -hmm. do you. Some niggas just got that lane. Yeah, that's, yeah, man. That's, <laughs> it's like a lot of people out there like that. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like it's your hustle. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to get out there and meet people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they know I be up, what, 5 a.m.? I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the hustle in you. In the street. Hand in hand. Yeah, you got it. Because that's how I get them the opportunity. Because everybody's a team. You know what I'm sure. Saying? And them boys do their job. They come out there, they perform, they go hard. So you got to have a team to actually get you the more opportunities. You know what I'm saying? Cause I've seen some rappers in the club in Tampa. I'm yeah. in Tampa vibing. Yeah. They don't really know who I am. I know who you is. Exactly. Bro. I'm gonna come talk to you. Like, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Them boy would try it, but they had their energy. <laughs> I'm serious though, but the thing was, they had their energy, and you know, they copying young boy now. That's the, that, I'm dead serious. Like, buddy, cause you got 30 niggas out there, but. He did enough to make you want to come. So it's like, shoot. It's all about your hustle, like when you rapping. Cause like them boys say it's a thousand of them. 
Now they coming out of the loves, out of the love yeah. towns too. Now you gotta remember, I'm, I'm a real Florida boy. Even though yeah. I'm from the crib, boy, it ain't nowhere I ain't. It's nowhere I ain't been in Florida. For real, for real, niggas is coming out of Lake City, Gifford, Florida, Bradenton, Saint Pete, Gainesville, Fort Myers. <laughs> A mockery. You don't know where a rap nigga might come from in Florida yeah, right yeah. now. Some real nigga shit. Nigga might come out of St. Augustine right now. Palaka or some shit. Cause if you really, if you really on this Florida circuit as an artist, boy, you for the oh yeah, all your shows for the me in all these towns, boy, where it ain't nothing but it's barely a Walmart, a family <laughs> dollar, and a prison. <laughs> For real, for real. And this is where you got to go pull up to, man. And that's where they going to pay the biggest yeah, money. Yeah. Because you ain't even from there. You know what I'm saying? So they get you that bigger. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. Yeah, I don't know. Now, y'all like, we going to keep that bit rocking and rolling, man. Y'all already know we got Young Shot, King yes, Lou in the motherfucking building. Who am I with T-Murray? We going to get into some of this music, too. They going to load up this Bluetooth. You know, we let the artists rock out on the show. You feel me? But where y'all see yourself in the next five years with the music? The from um, where y'all got, from what y'all got going right now? Five years, I feel like we definitely gonna be big. Not just me in particular, because we a team. I feel like we definitely gonna be big and be, <coughs> we gonna be signing more people. They're gonna be under the label and things like that. Um, and I'm gonna be able to put more, I'm gonna be able to put more people in position. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? like. Be able to take care of my family to the fullest um, extent. Have a couple of lounges and smoke shops under our names, you know, because we need different incomes yeah, regardless of yeah. being a millionaire, millionaire in the, um, in the uh, rap game. I just see us um, really affecting because SD stands for so different entertainment. Okay. And you know what I'm saying? So it's just, we're going to just try to get it from different areas, different aspects, different places, um, and just. Really try to hit the ground running. Five years later, we now the whole world know us. That's real. You know what I'm saying? So, Shaw, who you came up uh, <clears throat> growing up music wise? Wayne. I came up on Wayne. I was like, I remember being like seven years old trying to <coughs> know all that nigga songs word for word. I, mean, I, I can't remember the exact song, but I used to know that I like, the exact song that made me like write my first verse. Basically, and it was off. You remember back when Wayne mm -hmm. was remixing every goddamn thing. Yeah. Feel me? And I had did a remix off his remix. And that was like the first song I ever wrote. Like, I, think, I was like Gosh. seven, eight years old. But yeah, Lil Wayne, that's the yeah number one. Who you like? Who you about. like locally in the city when you was coming up? When I was coming up, shit, I listened to Whoop a lot. Feel me? Before Whoop. Before Whoop got jammed up, he was damn near the biggest thing in the city. You feel me? He was the first, I don't want to say first, but he was like the nigga that everybody thought was going to finally kick that door down. Yeah. You feel me? And once he caught it, once he got in his little situation or whatever, and then like the young niggas started taking over with like Pooley, Glock 9, Hot Boy, all them, they kind of created a whole new, they kind of reached a higher level than I think people here ever really thought you could reach. Especially with music, for sure. Because I remember, like, like you said, growing up, it was like it wasn't that many rappers necessarily in Orlando that really had a voice that people was getting their whip and really listen to. Now nah, you got damn near every other day is somebody that's maybe not even eighteen talking about how, acting like he the and, this, and I respect it. You feel me? Especially being from me, I respect it. I like how music is elevated, but them them young niggas, you feel me? They done created a whole lane to make anybody feel like they can do it. And I feel like that's the that's the goal. You feel me at the end of the day when you make it to that level, you wanna empower empower young niggas to make them feel like they can do some shit they never done before. So I respect them boy. Whoop whoop would probably be the main one I say I was listening to out the city type shit. For sure. Where well, you see yourself as far as amongst the locals in the next six months to a year. For me I don't necessarily 
don't necessarily try to compare myself to nobody. Not comparing yourself, but just as far as in six months to a year when we, when the tastemakers and DJs and, you know, everybody who looking in the city saying, all right, who like the I next one, who the next ones right now, who we looking at right now, who got the, who got the pop bubbling right now. I feel like I definitely have the respect I deserve. And that's really what I'm aiming for. Because what I was saying with the whole um, comparing, I didn't mean like, I know you wasn't asking it like that. But I mean, like, at the end of the day, we in the same industry. So it's always some type of competition. But at the same time, besides all that shit, I will do respect for my name and my team, which is what I'm doing for. You know, the SDE is what I stand on. And that's who I'm doing everything and what I'm doing for. Straight and up. So from six months to a year, all I want is for us to have a legit platform to where niggas know where we came from, what we own, and what we aim towards. That's that's my goal. That's real. I love that answer. I love that answer. That's real, man. Nah. That's real. Most people, most rappers, when you ask them, well, I want to have, want to be big as shit. I want to have a hundred million. <laughs> Take work, man. No, yeah. And that's what I hear in y'all that and that I like. You feel me? Y'all want to do that work. Y'all want to put in the work. <clears throat> and I definitely know from what I'm seeing already, y'all gonna make a, y'all gonna be great examples for what the next, the next batch coming up, what they need to do and the work they need to put in, along with making great music. So man, let's load this Bluetooth up, man, while we kicking shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't run out of life. Y'all already know what it is, man. Who am I with T. Murray? Rollers the brand. King Lou. Young Shard, you feel me? On a good Friday night, man. We could have been, been anywhere in the world, you feel me? Could have been at the club hanging out, fucking off. What you doing? niggas ain't shit, shit. You feel me? Hey. But look what we doing, baby. We making dreams come true, man. Nah, shit, I, I fuck with it. Yeah, man, I appreciate like, it, man. Nah, you know, we gonna spin back. You know, I spin back. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I spin back. You know what I'm saying? I got a... Big one coming for you, you know what I'm saying? And shout out to everybody who just gave me the inspiration to even start this shit up, cause this shit been in the works like, I wanna say about two and a half, almost three years, like people was telling me I was doing interviews just for my shit, for my campaign, yeah. and people yeah. was telling me like, bro, why you don't do a podcast or something? Like, I ain't never know that. When you did that, that's why I did you like, <laughs> try to move yo, yeah, <laughs> like, get right, like, like, like that's love, you feel me? Nah, because you working hard, you know what I'm saying? Like, you going hard. So it's like, at the end of the day, <clears throat> got to respect that. Feel me? Like, got to get on your shit. Yeah, I, that's I, right. We met you at what we want to do. Out. Shout out what we want to do. You already Your know that's doing fine. black ink today. Yeah. No, yeah. Boy, yeah. Feel yeah. me? So yeah. it's like, to see you do yeah. it, you home team. And they showed me, they showed me the wave, you yeah. feel me? Yeah. They, they showed me that like, it rolled out the red carpet for me, you feel me? From day one, you feel me? And they started the same way I started, you feel me? Shout out to In The Kitchen, like, they started the same way I did. Like, they really showed me that a nigga can do this shit, bro. H-Dot. Yeah, you Shout out H-Dot. Yeah, that's where we met at. No, we met at Orla. Yeah. Yeah, we met at, yeah, yeah. with Foe. Yeah, man, that's that. That was big, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, we met at Orla. Yeah, that's, that, that that's why I say you got to, I tell yeah, folks, boy, your, right. your network, determine your network, you feel me? You gotta open your mouth, bro. Like you said, uh, you know how we we came up. We came up in a different area. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, I'm gonna push up, bro. Yeah. You think I ain't never been scared to put? Hey, boy, I done walked up looking at it like, boy, these niggas, boy, these niggas, boy, these niggas might up on me, bro. But yeah. fuck that, I'm feeling go over yeah. Cause ain't nobody gonna handle business like you. You feel me? But we getting that bit loaded up. You feel me? Y'all already know what it is, man. Y'all just lay around. We cooling with. It. The gang gang in this bitch, you feel me? Hey. For to get to this good music, man. Y'all already know, man. We back at it, man. Who am I with T Murray, man? Rollers the brand. Young Shard, King Lou, man. We finna get into this music, man. Y'all already know what it is.
hard as everybody else. At first, I was looking at a whole rack of other songs on my tape, thinking that was going to be the one. And then he came along like, yeah, I'm just telling your story, huh? And he hops in my ass a lot, so. <laughs> yo. <laughs> no homo. Yeah, yo. Of course. Of course. <laughs> but, uh, he, he, that boy's like that, though. Sometimes you got to see how that shit affect other people, and you be like, damn. Yeah, they really felt where I was coming from. Yeah, yeah. And they do like that. So, you know, we got to get in some young shards, man. Straight out this West Orlando. Got to do that. Who am I with T. Murray? Young Shard. Talking this shit on my set. I was just breaking up pieces in the tent. 
We gon' make all of this shit in the sand. Better not. Still, yeah. we gon' keep all of this shit in the sand. I don't be talking this shit on my side. I was just breaking down pieces of the sand. We gon' back all of this shit in the sand. For sure, man. So, you know, we just been kicking shit, you know, on this good Friday, man. For the key that's been rocking and rolling, man. Young Shot, King Lou, Rollers the Brand. Good threats in the air. <laughs> when he wrote that song, I, I damn near thought it was mine. Especially when you made that, bitch. That bit so hard. And that's one thing I see about y'all too. Like y'all feel when I cause I got to see y'all live performing together more than a couple of times. You feel me? It's like is it when one goes, the other one goes. Yeah. It don't matter whose song on, you feel me? Whether it's they song together, it's just your song by yourself or his song by itself, y'all. That shit go. I like that chemistry, you feel me? Man, what he go through, I go through, what I go through, he go through. That shit like that. So good or bad, that shit right there. We gonna get back into you, but you say you from DC, right? Yeah, Washington DC. You feel me in the building? So tell me about you know, just your music, cause your music consumption and just what you was listening to, like just coming out of, um, out of DC. Nah, I came up on like Fat Trail, Glizzy, okay. Life Show. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm shot Glizzy. Um, Okay, that 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 era. Yeah, and right now no savage running it. So I mean, truthfully, I got like the the posture from my city. But yeah. My music making is not what they you know what they do because I don't want to be I don't want to be um, labeled as a city nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying I don't want to be oh he rap like them like this that and third. So I took a whole different span and just tried to um, use my voice mainly and tell my story. You know what I'm saying? Cause the reason why I'm able to like get away, cause a lot of people where I'm from don't make it out. You know what I'm saying? Because it's small. And like DC, you can call it a neighborhood. It's only you only take 15 minutes to get yeah. through. You know what I'm saying? So um Definitely know that. Yeah, so it, it's just I took the whole span, I was going to college in different places. So Just I'll, tell I'll, tell me about the irony of that, you just actually coming from there. Cause you know, I done been there before, you feel me? Really like, bro, them blocks y'all stand on. And everything that then uh, run this country is right there, but we slummed out. Oh yeah, there, you feel me? Yeah. Like explain that to me, bro. Um, I mean, growing up there. Is, hold, on, is, hold on, before you go, I ain't gonna, I ain't even gonna lie to you. Before <laughs> me being from Florida, I never even knew DC was like that, and that's not even like no disrespect. But I'm saying until I it went to DC, you, uh, yeah. and then bro started taking me where he was from and shit. All we know is the White House. Yeah, you feel, <laughs> you feel me? If you ain't ever been there, I'm yeah. like, bro, y'all. Just like how people clown Orlando, talking about Disney yeah, World. Yeah, yeah, shit. yeah, same so, like, shit. When I said it, he kind of laughed, and I'm like, what you mean, nigga, what else is there? Yeah. His brother tried to hit I'm like, oh. his brother came and picked me up from my neighborhood, and he didn't want to put on the gate. <laughs> I'm like, well, I, yeah, it's like that. Um, It's just. It's, it's definitely 100% different from uh, Orlando and, well, Florida and a lot of places because it's a city. So they look at us like it's a tourist a city and stuff like that. We're not even a state, we're just a city. Yeah. So on saying that, it's hard coming up because, like, everybody knows everybody. And everybody trying to be that top guy. The reason why I moved is because I've been a superstar. I was a superstar in high school because I played football. I was a superstar in high school, uh, on the news every week. Um, got big recruits, big offers, and things like that. But the one thing I couldn't leave alone was the other lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? So I got caught up in so many things. Um, that going, like I used to be in college and going home after every game. Or I'd go home on a Friday and catch a five-hour uh, bus back to New York, and I got a game in the morning. 
You know what I'm saying? So I, it was just trying not to be stuck in that mentality and being stuck at home. I had to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had to uh, overcome my fears of being away from everybody I already knew, the people I grew up with. Because like, like your parents say all the time, the people will be right back where you, yeah. where they was, where you left them at. And every time I go home, they still on my same block. They still on my same block. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, I just had a mindset of getting away and making a better, about making a better um, situation out of my life. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. City, I love my city, but I had to get away from it. It's not uh, being so deep, deep trouble. That's <laughs> real. Yeah. Shaw, sure, talk to me, because niggas sold me out, boy, when I moved. Well, niggas sold me out. Niggas sold me out when I moved to Lauderdale. <laughs> Oh, well, you know how to say it, baby. Niggas sold me out when I moved to Lauderdale. Oh, damn, you at these Lauderdale niggas now, huh? <laughs> that what we doing? Nah, nah, you know, the crib, Miami. See, that growing up is just different. You know what I'm saying? You know, he's down there, so that's just what it is. That's the vibe. Like, that's even the vibe with the industry down there. You know what I'm saying? So it's like to get away from them. That shit be a vibe. But it was just so crazy, but that trick talked about it. It's like, man, the only time niggas really like go to Orlando and shit like that. Well, nigga, if you on that Bluebird, you feel me? If you know what the Bluebird is. But me personally, like, the family I come from, bro, bitch, I was... Bro, I used to, niggas on my team, nigga, if niggas know me, bro, I played football coming up. Like, all, no day, I still, I bleed black and gold forever. Shout man. out Scott Lake. Yeah, we... Shout we, out Scott Lake. Shout out Scott Lake. Our biggest rival. Talk about, talk about no yeah. day, Scott. Yeah. No, 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 no. Shout out no day, our man. Look, hey, bro, we, bro, we used to go ham, yeah. boy. Yeah, that, that shit, like, bitch, our shit. That shit was a game <laughs> Friday, time, Saturday I night, know. boy, no day, yeah. that Scott Lake. That Scott shit, Lake? That bitch, that shit, like, <laughs> bitch, you Super might be like, game, fuck man. the Dolphins, nigga. Yeah. Type shit. Yeah, because we right by the stadium. You feel me? Like, that shit was real coming up. But, nigga, I used to get in fights with my teammates, bro, because when we used to go to the away games, see, I was a jet. I'm really, I'm really from Kansas City, bro, like, when, when the matchbox was up type shit, you feel me? My uncle done stayed in the matchbox, my granddaddy stayed right in front of that bitch before, where everything that's right there now, CVS, all that was nothing but dirt in the matchbox. Exactly. I used to jump the back gate, go to the matchbox every morning, summer break. Faithfully, <laughs> you feel me? I'm the nigga. I'm playing. I'm a throw up tackle nigga. Yeah, we stayed playing throw up tackle. To the heart, bro. I used to. Yeah, I had them. I had them sports dreams too, bro. I was on that football shit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I'm going. We going to other parts and shit. You know, we gotta wait till if you on a Friday night. You know, the biggest pound like what one fifty five. So you got. We gotta wait till they play them before we go home. Oh, nigga, I'm yeah. playing throw a tackle with the niggas from the other team. Team, yeah. <laughs> Vibing, bro. <laughs> nigga, why you with these? Why you? What you with these fuck niggas for, bro? What is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, nigga, my own teammate, like real deal, bro. We on the buck. Do, 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 do. But I used to get these niggas phone. I man, with this house phone time. I used to get these niggas, we vibing so hard, man. Take my, man, my mama let you spend the night. Nigga, I used to catch a tri rail to everybody. That's how I used to know. Said, niggas, fuck niggas. I thought, how you know so many niggas in Broward? When niggas finally started moving to Broward, a little piece, my era, niggas was, I was fucking niggas up. Cause bitch, everywhere you think you ducked off, nigga, yeah, I'm right there. Boy, how you get? <laughs> and I know all the locals. Like, yeah, you, you can see that I've been there. Like, this ain't no, I just popped up type shit. You feel me? But it's because of building our relationships from... Yeah, I knew that when you knew Dredd. Dredd yeah. <laughs> Dred really family, you feel yeah, me? Yeah, I mean, so he would tell it all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, like, like he real real deal real. family, okay. like, real deal yeah. family type yeah. shit. Yeah. You feel yeah. me? Go ahead. Like, like, I knew that. Like, when you do that, I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. I'm glad you came to that interview too. You feel me? That shit was live. You, yeah, had to, you know what I'm saying? That, Man, Miami boy was crazy. So it was like to bring him down and chill him out was like, this is another area where, you know Niggas what I mean? came from the era where. Man, you go anywhere and nah, niggas say you from Miami, but nigga want to kill you, bro, because you just, they think you coming for some snake shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Florida definitely different for me. But I was just one of the few <laughs> niggas, I was just one of the few niggas who was just always going everywhere, nigga, family vacation, <coughs> football, we in Orlando, every, every Thanksgiving, nigga, North Day, nigga from the 80s, bitch, we in Orlando, every, 
But you know, everything. Yeah. 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 Whoever, yeah. Scott Lake, yeah. North Day, Care yeah. City, oh boy, we are every we gonna play each other all year, see each other score. Yeah, Thanksgiving nigga, we going on there though. Yeah, we was on um Uncle Luke team. Mm-hmm. Vontae, Darrell, and we played Snoop Dogg team. I ain't gonna lie, one thing about, let me tell you, so I got a story about them fucking with Liberty City Warriors. Shout out to them. I never played them in football because you know, we ain't never, because they was pop, <laughs> cause they was pop Warner. Mm-hmm. But I played baseball for North Day too, bitch. And we, oh, these niggas, when I tell you, I, I know Cap, dog, they used to be the brakes off of us, boy. Yeah, they were hard. They, they, they always had to, them boys to go ham. Bro, they had a. <laughs> Shout out my cousin Tony, bro, from Cass City, bro. Hey, this nigga I tell you, they had this one little picture, dog. He used to do this little dog. We jets, nigga. We, I think we what 10, 11. He used to do this little shit like he like, like hop up on his t- dog jet throwing ninety, bro. <laughs> <laughs> jet throwing, uh, bro. Red dog. Them used to be the seventeen to one. Baseball? 16, to, yeah, baseball. But that's the only team I ever really like got spanked by in baseball. Scott Lake, boy, y'all broke my heart so many times. Uh, every time I know. No, nah, I'm. I'm because I, you know, when you come out there, that's Scott Lake, bro. Shout out Eli Rogers, Quentin Dunbar. But we was all mm-hmm. on one team, boy. Wild man with my center. Hey, bro. That shit, bro. Nigga never, nigga never escaped Optimus with a win from Scott Lake, boy. Uh, well, yeah. Never. But they had Corbin Lamb one year. That bit was crazy. And then we used to play uh, Bunch Park. Yeah, I was in with Bunch Park first. They had Teddy. Yeah. Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. We was out there. We had to play them boys. That shit. Oh, that Optimus shit was real. <laughs> that Optimus shit was real, boy. That Optimus shit was real. Real in Dade County, boy. I'm telling you. Hey, bro, Teddy at Bush Paul was like one nigga, bro. Like, same shit he's doing now. <coughs> Taking that shit over. Who in the middle? Curry got four. In the middle of watching. By the time y'all see this, somebody should have been on one. Boy, that shit over. Who got it? Boys, yeah, about seven, 25 seconds. Oh, yeah, it's a wrap. 2-2? Two, two. Yep. Two, two. Two. I took the over. What is it? But we just wrapping it up, you feel me? But before we get out of here, though, just let these folks know where to find you. Give them all your info. Let them know what y'all got coming up. Give them everything. Line it up for them. I want Lou to go first. <laughs> What we got the, up next, Lou? Uh, we got a show in Daytona, you know what I'm saying? And then we got um, like a couple of interviews lined up. When the show in Daytona? 22nd. Uh, Wrong. Yeah. 23rd. 23rd. <laughs> By the time they see it, it's going to be already. You're going to be watching it. You're going to be watching it on viral. Show in Daytona on the 23rd. Um, is it 23rd? I got to see it, but we got a show. 22nd. 22nd. Yeah, King Lou, you can find me on all platforms. Music out right now. Uh, Song Spoken album just dropped. Can't let y'all know what's coming next because I'm trying to be sneaky. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to drop and then nobody's going to expect it. Um, Got a couple of, I got a whole album ready for y'all again, but I ain't going to do that. I'm going to take it slow and hold on to something just to make y'all eager to listen to what I got going on. You know what I'm saying? Um, Yeah, that's the game. Rollers the brand. Here we go. Yeah, I'm sure. What we got for him? Shit, I done dropped. Um, <clears throat> I done dropped two projects already this year. I probably got two more for y'all before this year. Most of the trap. I dropped in February, which is, <coughs> which is more like a long uh, love R and B vibe. And then I gave y'all the I Am Shy, which is what I know y'all want to hear type of shit. And I dropped that in like two months ago. I'm gonna have probably two projects before the year over, at least one. And like you said, I got the show and they told me I'm gonna keep, keep popping up on y'all with the show so y'all can fuck with me. But yeah, outside of that, I got projects on the way for the show and I got videos just definitely dropping. Outside of that, you feel me? I'm gonna keep it pushing. You feel me? SD the game, Rollers the brand. You know, keep stepping.
For sure. Disclaimer in the why you know what I'm saying, in the interview, you feel me? Excuse all the coughing, man. Don't mind us. We just got a lot of good threats going mm -hmm. around, you feel me? Shaw, what we got before we get out of here, my boy? Shit, we got a lot of shit, but this is a surprise though. They ain't noticed by all you DJs that's watching this. I done contacted y'all. We finna do a volume one. You know what I'm saying? Um, Trail five, we finna take it like to like that Miami. You know what I'm saying? Got young shot out in one. I gotta get Lou on one. But this is like we getting all the DJs in Orlando and put them boys on the song and we finna go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like so, you know, we just wanna make a presence, you know what I'm saying, everywhere we go. You know what I'm saying? I I think differently from a lot of people. I think airway. So I think that they could get on a trail five B, a major nine B, something Florida where we could tap into the people then the additional music that we all have <clears throat> can grow on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, one hand wash the other always, yeah. bro. You know me, I'm always next yes, in the sir. lab. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> y'all already know what it is, man. It was an honor and a pleasure, you feel me? We definitely going to double back, man. I appreciate y'all catching me at the beginning stages, you <laughs> feel me? This shit going to go down in history. They going to have to scroll down that page, boy. <laughs> once that bitch in them M's, because we going to hit them M's, bro. But once he get to them M's, you going to have to scroll all the way back down and see we got this shit out the mud for real, man. Appreciate your hospitality. Y'all already know what it is, man. Young Shaw, King Lou, Rollers the Brand, man. Who am I with T. Murray? Y'all already know what it is. Let's rock.